It's hot Good morning. Good morning. Midweek. Uh, these weeks just fly by. It's so true. It really uh, feels like that it does. I don't know what uh, you're doing. If maybe your time's moving <laughs> slow, ours is is trucking right along. Um, here we are at Wednesday. Wednesday. So, having said that, uh, Wednesday is always. Um, an interesting day for us. We um, have service tonight, right. 7 p.m. You will want, we're still doing online only um, uh, for Wednesday night services. And so we want you to tune in, be a part of that. Um, I, I can tell people are starting to get busy. They're, right. they're tired of sitting in their houses. And uh, so, but we still want to encourage you, don't forsake hearing the word of God. It's important to stay fed, but if you also are a part of this house, it's important to stay connected. Right, um, right. So you it's can important. not feel like, oh, I'm not a part of this or I'm not a part of that. We want you uh, to make sure another way that we stay in the house and yes. stay connected even when we're not here is uh, tuning into services. And uh, so come in, don't miss that opportunity. Go share this, uh, invite your friends and your family to come and watch. I've got the hiccups today, I don't know what's going on. I've been drinking coffee this morning. Excuse me. Um, today's reading comes out of Psalms and um, I'm gonna share Psalms 55. And um, this was, uh, a verse the Lord gave me one time. Um, David is uh, dealing with, it's, it's a contemplation of David. Mm -hmm. And he is dealing with the treachery of some friends. Right. Have you ever been betrayed? Right. Uh, you know, yesterday we talked about real life issues that we're facing. And this is, it sounds like it's a continuation. Right. Um, being betrayed and mm -hmm. having uh, people, you know, <clears throat> listen, have you ever just known, you don't know it, know it, but you know it, that sure. people are talking oh, yeah. behind your back and, and breathing uh, divisive plans. And so this is kind of where David is. And, and I love it because he takes it to the Lord and that's what we need to do. And that's what we have learned to do in those moments. Sure. Uh, he starts out, give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself. Mm. from my supplication. Please don't hide your face from me, That's God. That's good. Um, and he says, my heart is pained within me. Uh, terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come up on me and horror has overwhelmed me. Maybe you feel like David in this Psalms 55. So I said, oh, that I would have wings like a dove that I could fly away and be at rest. Have you ever just wanted to make your escape and you <laughs> thought being, you know, it's always greener on somebody else's turf right, or right. if you could just escape to a destination and be away, trouble right. would be away from you. Indeed, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest, destroy, O oh Lord, and divide their tongues, which he's saying, don't allow my enemies to be in unity. Don't allow their words to bring a unified destruction mm. against me. I've seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night, they go around it on its walls. Iniquity and trouble are also in the midst of it. Destruction in the midst, oppression and deceit. Do not depart from its streets. Listen, and here's the key. This is where it gets hurtful. You expect to see destruction afar. You expect people that you don't know to do and say things. Right. And here's what he says in verse 12. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me. Then I could bear it. I could handle it if it wasn't somebody I didn't know. Right. Nor is it one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me. Then I could hide from it. But it was you, a man of my equal my companion and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and we walked to the house of God in the throng. People that you are to be in fellowship and communion with and going to the house of God with sure. and uh, not mm. understanding, wow, <laughs> you are my enemy. You're the one that has hurt me because I could have handled it if it was somebody outside of my circle, but when it's my inner circle. Right, right. Whoa. Mm. Wow. 
that hurts. That hurts. When yeah. it's your inner circle, somebody that you trust and take counsel with, I bet Jesus knows what that feels like. Yeah. And so he says, let death seize them. Let them go down alive into hell. <laughs> Well, let's not spare anything, David, for <laughs> wickedness is in their dwelling and among them. But listen, here's what he said. As for me, I will call upon God and mm. the Lord shall save me evening and morning and at noon. I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many against me. God will hear and afflict them. Even he who abides from of old because they do not change, therefore they do not fear God. And so listen, he has put forth his hands against those who were at peace. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, <laughs> but war was in his heart. That's what we were talking about yesterday. It's a heart issue. You can say all the right things right. and have evil in your heart. Right. Your words could be smoother than butter, mm. but when there's war in your heart, war comes out of you. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Mm. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Amen. So he's saying, I'll trust you, Lord. Yes. I will trust you. So in times like this, when you... You know, we pray, God, let the evidence <clears throat> come forth right. where it's coming from. But at times you have to prepare, re prepare yourself that it's very well in the inner, inner circle. Right. And we have to always come back to this Psalms 55, cast it upon the Lord and the Lord will sustain you when you keep your heart pure. Yeah. When you find out, ooh, I could have handled it if it was somebody who wasn't in my midst. Right, right. But somebody who we took sweet counsel together. Sure. Well, it's, it, again, it goes back to Sunday's message, you know, inside the family, inside the home, the, the family that went to the temple together and worship, and they um, admired mm. that time and cherished that time and honored God in all their ways. And then there came that time of betrayal and that time of provoking and that time of uh, taunting, right. you know, <clears throat> and who knows how, how much that was behind her back. But then she decided, hey, I'm going to do this to your yeah. face. And the enemy's doing that um, in this season. He's getting much bolder. Yeah. Yeah. He's getting much bolder. And, and look, spirits don't lie. You know, the, the spirits don't lie. And so that's why we've got to pray for that spirit of discernment, not both, not based on personalities in circle mm -mm. circles, but those personalities that's allowing the principality that's it. because it's, it's, it's not flesh and blood. It's, it's, um, you know, principalities and spirits. And, um, that's, that's what we war against. That is what we war against. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I love that cast your burden on the Lord. And we've talked about that off and on over the last several weeks. And, um, Casting it on the Lord is a crucial, crucial thing. And that's, you know, he, he was referring to the sermon that he preached on Mother's Day. And Hannah, uh, she went to the <clears throat> Lord. She went to the Lord. And, you know, sometimes when it looks like you're um, not winning like you once were or, you know, favor mm -hmm. uh, breeds evil contempt right. against you. And uh, sometimes that'll bring out the provoking spirits. When you're favor and graced, amen, the, the, some, some spirits don't, don't, it irritates certain personalities and spirits. Absolutely. And so there's um, a threatened, uh, they're threatened by that favor and threatened by the handprints of God on your life. Honestly, that's exactly what it is. You know, although Hannah had limitations, she was still loved. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and so that was the, that was the situation uh, in that circumstance. Well, then don't allow anybody to tell you otherwise today. 
Uh, you are loved, you are favored of the Lord if you are in covenant with him. Um, if you're outside of that covenant, don't be, don't be the provoker. Don't be the one that is setting and allowing your words to bring divisiveness against uh, leadership. And uh, sure enough, uh, look at your inner circle. Is your inner circle uh, bettering you for the cause of the kingdom? Or is it actually bringing a divisiveness <laughs> in the kingdom? So um, if it were an enemy, I could handle that. Right. But it was my friend. Right. And so listen, maybe you've been betrayed today. Maybe you're struggling. Give it to God. Do not look for vengeance on your own self. Allow, allow God to do it. Allow God to do it. You know, and here's the thing. I mean, in, in, in the whole concept of Sunday's message was that that pain brought about what they what God intended for her life. Right. It took it took that betrayal. It took that persecution and that provoking um, for for Hannah to realize she was missing more. Right. Or that she was missing something, and it it took the provoking to um, basically bring her spirit to the realization there's more to be had. Mm. And so whatever that is that's uh, provoking you and whatever it is that, um, you know, that you're feeling and maybe it is close, sometimes that close hurt is the worst hurt, but it also is a place where um, I think God works in, in those moments of where, in the affliction, in the yes. persecution, in the pain, in the struggle, that's where we grow. That's where we grow as individuals and uh, especially when we're, we're leaning on Him, not the way our own understanding, because if we lean on our understanding, uh, we'll walk by way of our flesh. Yes. But if we allow the, that pressure and the persecution to <clears throat> basically fuel um, rather than limit, and uh, you know, there was limits on Hannah, but she didn't even realize it until there was the persecution. Yeah, the provoking. Yeah, it was the pro provoking that took place that allowed her to realize, hey, oh, there's, there's something more. I want. There's yeah. something I want here. There's, there's something, something I that, I, that I desire now. And you know? it has to be a want. Um, you know, yes, there was this uh, personal want that she had, but she took her personal want and gave it to the Lord. That's it. And um, we that's casting it on the Lord. Yep. That's what Hannah did. Not only did she go to the Lord in prayer, in deep prayer and right. supplication, right. Uh, she <clears> then <throat> said, okay, if you give me this promise, um, I'm gonna give him to you, Lord. Right. And he will serve you all the days of his life. That's it. So we have to not want what we want selfishly. Um, God will not give you your heart's desires if it pulls your heart away from Him. Right. And so oftentimes, you know, you're, you're praying for, you know, stuff that's really not in His will and not in His will is anything that would pull you away from Him. And so we need to always take an account. Yes. Does this take me to you? Right. Does this lead me closer to you? Can I give this to you, God? Right. Or is this going to uh, be a curse at the end of the day that pulls me away from you? Right. Presence? Well, and, and here's the thing too. We, I think we've talked about this as well, but you know, it's easy for us to, when we start to realize that it is close and it hurts, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we can, we're trying to figure it all out and yeah. we get in that state of suspicion. And man, when you get into that, you might as well just hang it up. Oh, it's terrible. You and know. we've all been there. Yeah. We've all been there and you're trying to figure it out. And um, listen, the Holy Spirit will reveal things like that. Yes. And I think people, you know, people want to position <clears throat> it as if it's something else and make it where, it's, oh, they, you know, the Holy Spirit don't speak like that. Yes, he does. Right. Um, and people who don't understand it will, will tell you you're crazy for what you heard him say right. or what he showed you. But right, right. he does not play. No, he doesn't. And he is very specific. When and when you, he, when you, when you humble yourself and you get, and you cast it on the Lord, mm -hmm. and if it's something that needs to be revealed, yeah. he will absolutely 
reveal it. It's, Make it real plain. Yeah. And you got to prepare yourself. Yep for the revealing of it, because that's where I feel like David was. David probably m was maybe in suspicion, and then all of a sudden it became evident, and he's going, oh, wow, yeah. I didn't know this was coming from you. Was well, somebody that close, yeah. That close, and when it's revealed that it's someone close, it, it becomes, it, 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 it has the potential to literally shut you down. Well, and stress you out and, and worry and, you. And not and, trust anybody. And that's yeah. where a lot, I don't know why we all, we've, we've come back to this two weeks now. That's why people get to a place of, of not wanting to be around people. Um, be, and he, I, we heard it preached one time, uh, I believe it was down at OCI. Mm -hmm. Uh, watch it's a season to watch and, and pray, pray yeah. because if you pray without watching have you ever seen somebody and it was preached that you know somebody had been on a 40-day fast and heavy in prayer and literally came out of that spiritual high and fell right into an adulterous situation. Right, right. Because you weren't watching where you were going. Mm, that's good. And then you can <clears throat> watch without praying and that's where that spirit of suspicion is and I feel like that's a lot of where the church mm -hmm. has been we we always watching to find fault in somebody else right and we're not praying in the watch now we got to watch and we got to pray both uh, both and listen if it's like Ezekiel I believe uh, 33 ish uh, somewhere in there the watchman on the wall. The watchman on the wall had a responsibility to alert when an enemy was coming in. And when the watchman failed to alert the people and bloodshed, then blood was on the watchman's hand, okay? But if the watchman sounded the alarm that there was coming an enemy in 33, the camp. 6. 33, 6, Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. If the watchman alerted and the people did not <sighs> heed to the alert, then the, then the blood was not on the watchman's hand. And I feel like that there, there are people sounding the spiritual alarm in this day and in this hour, and uh, they will be excused and the blood will not be on their hands because they've done what they've been called to do and they're sounding the alarm. Mm, that's good. Um, however, there is a, a people that are on the wall and they under suspicion and they watching and they reporting everything they see, but they're not sounding the alarms mm. for safety. It goes back to what we were talking about yesterday. And so a lot of people sounding the alarms for the wrong thing and selfishness and in pride, and we've got to be cautious that we are watchmen on the wall, but we're not just watching, we are praying and using the discernment right, of God, right. the discernment of when to move and when not to move, the discernment of when to speak and what not to speak. Listen, not every voice that speaks to you is the Holy Spirit. <gasps> <laughs> There's a shock. <clears throat> we gotta be discerning to know what voice is speaking to us That's good. and praying and hearing the right voice, voice yeah. because the enemy will always try to speak. He's a copycat. He's not <laughs> a creator. We can read Genesis 1 and know that in the beginning God created. Satan does not have the ability to create anything. He only takes what has been created and perverts it. Mm. And so we've got to know that we are hearing the right voice That's because good. he will always mimic what God is trying to do and speaking to you. So he will always come in and try to copycat and pervert and make you speak the wrong thing. Right. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Pray and watch. Watch and pray. That's good. Watchmen on the walls. Watchmen on the walls. And I think the key in this as well is not allowing those types of situations, situations to detour you. Get well to frustrate you to the point of of giving up. Absolutely. You know? Well, because David it, David knew always, and we've we've talked about he this. Went to the he Lord. always went to the Lord. He always he casted his Lord. cares upon the Lord. First Peter five seven, and then also here in Psalms we see that same uh, principle that David is applying uh, to his situation and circumstance because 
it's easy for us to get caught in that trap. Oh boy, is it not? And that's the enemy's ultimate goal. That that was Saul's issue. You know, <laughs> he got caught in a trap. Yes, sir. Um, and once you get caught in that trap, it's just like a, a hamster spinning in the, the wheel. It's like you never, you'll never escape it no. unless you allow God. You cast it upon Him and, and say, "Look, uh, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lean on my feelings right now." Right. I'm not going to lean on uh, how much it hurt and, no. you know, the betrayal. And here's the thing, too, is when you know the bigger picture, it's easier to overcome. That's right. And so, so I good. think in, in those situations and um, it's funny because even what just happened to us mm -hmm. with that whole thing, going back to that, uh, <clears throat> falsely accused of, <laughs> of being bad parents and, yes, of course, sir. Amanda, you know, uh, anyway, we won't get into all that. And but have anyway, a drug user. By yeah, the way. We, there was. Listen, if you missed it a few weeks ago, we shared uh, <laughs> last month. Uh, we were there were some false accusations brought against us. We mm -hmm. didn't know till it literally showed up at our door. We were drug tested in our own home. Our children were all interviewed. We were interviewed. Uh, we had to provide character witnesses, all of the, all of the fun stuff. And here's the deal: for a for a split Whew. second, it honestly makes you go, "What? This is what we get for preaching the gospel." But then you look back at Stephen, <laughs> yeah, and why Paul. do we, Paul? Like literally, how many? Paul Paul received um, three times. 40 minus one lashes. That was that was a punishment that was given. So three times he received in different courses of his life those 39 stripes. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm I'm not one to live like oh we're this persecuted people. No. But at the end of the day, when you stand for the kingdom of God, you very quickly understand that you have enemies. And we've preached that, and we've noted, and we've faced trials yeah. and tribulation and he's made Jesus made it very plain if they did these things to me if they said those things about me yeah. they will also say the same things about you and do those things to you and so uh, when you separate we had to we had to go to we you, had to go you, to the lord you said you preached a sermon one time separate, to, separate imitate. to imitate and and when you live that separated life not just on the platform or you know, but when you truly desire, I'm not saying there's perfection in any sh way, shape, or form, but we've d we've chosen it's constantly to be separated mm -hmm. uh, s to imitate who he, who is. he is, and and so that is the enemy's target. Yes. He, and when he knows that you're determined, no matter what comes your way, and I can honestly say in that situation, in times past, things like that would have messed with me. You know, but things, we had a warning. We knew it was. We coming. had a warning. Thank God for that. Prophetically, there was a prophetic warning. But even even at that rate, there's been moments where my mind would go rampant, run rampant, and also, again, bringing up the scripture, um, tribulations work with patience, mm -hmm. patience experience, and and then and that experience brings about hope. We've had a lot of experience. Yes, sir. We've lived some life even together, 18 years yes, sir. of marriage. And, you know, and, and going through so many storms and so many situations and so many attacks and so many afflictions and so many hurts, yes. um, all of that helps you in scenarios such as this, because I can honestly say with whatever, whoever this person was, I don't know who it is. I don't know who you are if you're watching, <laughs> but, but the truth is there's no hate. There's no, no bitterness. I wouldn't even want anything to happen to this person, truthfully. I mean, that's not even, you know. No, nope, we prayed but, for them. But um, so there, there lies the trust in God. And that's where, you ha that's where David understood. He still felt those things. He still felt, oh man, this, this kind of hurts a little bit because it's close. But you know what, God, I trust you I because trust you. no matter what, where the persecution comes from, no matter what I have to go through, I have you. Mm -hmm. And you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother and mm -hmm. you never leave and That's you never right. forsake and you're always with me. Even until the you end. You know, and so David knew where his source, source was. was. He knew where his refuge was. Mm. 
He knew where to turn. He knew where to go. We can hear it all through all His worship, through all his through teaching. His praise, all through His teaching. Well, that's, that's anybody who did anything great, uh, they saw great opposition. Right. They had to stand ground and honestly um, not be very popular with some. Right. And so listen, be encouraged today. Don't fall in the status quo. Don't go with the flow. That that right there is so just, it, it's, it's overrated. Do not go with the flow. Um, expect impact and know that if you're doing what you're doing for the cause of Christ, it doesn't matter what comes your way. Submit to him. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Uh, it doesn't mean that trouble ain't coming. Right. Because trouble might come right to your door. But it does mean that you have a hope uh, that is beyond the trouble. Right, right. You have hope that is sustaining and you have hope that will lead you through every single thing that you will face. That's it. And so that's a promise today that we can stand on. Give it to God. Cast your burden on the Lord. If you've been falsely accused, if you've been rejected, if you've been wounded, if you've been lied on, cheated on, stolen from, all of those things. Listen, do not get rebellious in it. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And don't get rebellious and, and haughty and ugly and bitter. Uh, give it to God and let him have his perfect work in you, through you, and to you. Amen. Can we, can we read that verse one more time? Mm -hmm. uh, just concluding on that, verse uh, 22 of 55 and I always look at these numbers now. I, I, I didn't used to be that person, but now, uh, you know, you look at five is the number of grace, double grace. And then we look at 22, which is the witness. <clears throat> but it says, cast your burdens on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall. This is how we're sustained. He shall. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. If you trust him, Jesus. you shall not be moved. You're standing on the standard on of God's foundation. word. And then 23 says, but you, O Lord, shall bring them down to the pit of destruction. <laughs> because and, wicked will never prevail right. over the hand of God. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in you. I will trust So you. bloodthirsty there. Look at that. The enemy's bloodthirsty. Yes, he is. <laughs> Think about that. Yes, he is. He's after the bloodline that you represent. Come on. He's been after him for a long time and he couldn't defeat him. Thank you. He God. couldn't conquer him. He couldn't seal him up. He, you, you cannot seal up the blood of Jesus Christ. And so the enemy is bloodthirsty, but it, the, we can see right here that God shall bring them down to the pit. One day the enemy is going to see that pit. Yes. And he's going to be thrown into that pit for, for the last time. It's going to be over. Um, at the end, God's people win. Uh -huh. and, and so just understand that. Know Thank that you, Father. Uh, any deceitfulness, uh, persecution, uh, God handles it. When you give it to him, he handles it. And you, he, the scripture is very confident in saying, David is very confident in saying here, he shall never permit the righteous to be moved. His righteousness will uphold you. Ours is filthy rags. It's no good for nothing. That's it. But His righteousness, but his righteousness. sustains us. Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for each and every person, God, Lord, that is watching we today. We praise you, Father. You see their heart. God, Lord, you know their hurts. You know their struggles. You know the torment in their mind that continues to try to pull them away from you and your truth and your righteousness. Father, I am asking you to show them the way today. God, Lord, that they can cast their burdens upon you and you will sustain them, Father. When they give the betrayal to mm. you, when they give the wounds and the words to you, God, when, when they give you every single bit of hurt that they have faced in their life, God. We know you, that Father greater God. comes out of it and you will not allow the righteous uh, to fall. But God, in the name of Jesus, here's what I do know. You will not allow the evil to prevail over your kingdom. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, it might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but they will see 
see your vengeance rise up yes, Father, in the God. name of Jesus and justice being served yet again. And so, God, Lord, we can't get focused on the wrong thing because That's if right. we're looking over here at the wounds and we're licking our wounds, mm. we miss your purpose and Ooh, your promise. And we come down off the wall and others are lost yes, in the midst of it. So, God, Lord, let us keep our post. Yes. Let us watch and let us pray. Let us keep our eyes focused upon you in this hour, Father. Let us be discerning. Allow the discernment of the Holy Ghost to come alive in the hearts and the minds of your righteous people, God. Don't allow us to long to look for things to prove a point, sure, but God, God Lord, let us this. know what what to connect <clears throat> with. Let us know uh, the evil that is lurking in the corners. Yes. And for more importantly, not for our own benefit, but God, Lord, so that your kingdom purpose will be uh, prevailing yes, in Lord. everything, yes. God, Lord, that it will no longer hinder your work in the kingdom, that it will no longer hinder the work of your church again, Shh. God. But Lord, I thank you we praise for giving you, us Father. the opportunity to cast it upon you. I thank you for giving yes, us Father. the hope of a future, God, Lord, that you, if you are for us, who Can in this world us. could be against us, God? Lord, we thank you that although we feel pressed on every side, we are not crushed. We are not destroyed. And so, Lord, let us look up. Let us keep our focus mm. today and let us cast it upon you, knowing that you are our sustainer. Yeah in everything we face. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful you, day. We'll Jesus see you name. at seven o'clock. Amen.